to the channel. Who wants to see the top end of a CRF 250R replaced? Because that's what we're going to do today. So stick with me. But first, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you can come on back, check out what kind of projects we got going on. Don't forget to smash that like button. Always helps out. I appreciate it, guys. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is pop your seat off. It's usually just a couple bolts in the back. Slips right off the gas tank. Um, your gas tank, you can just pop out the two bottom bolts on each side of the shrouds. Fuel valve bolt, pop that out. And then pop the top bolt out for the gas tank. The whole assembly pops right off. So after that, what you're going to want to do is just start um, pulling the engine apart from the top. And pretty much what you're going to do is just pop out the spark coil. You're going to pull the valve cover off. You're going to drain the coolant and then while the coolant's draining you can go ahead and just pop little things off like uh, like I said the valve cover um, you're gonna want to undo the chain tensioner here and that's you just pop this bolt out and then screw it in I usually will use like a flathead screwdriver crank it in and then use a, a small pair of ice grips and that will stop it from untwisting um, you pop the carburetor off <coughs> Um, you'll probably want to undo these two bottom bolts in the back, loosen up this top one, and then loosen up your car boot clamps on both sides of the carburetor. <clears throat> loosen up your exhaust to header clamp there, and then you can pop this whole assembly up and then tighten this bolt back down and it'll keep it up out of the way. And then once you do that, um, your coolant should be drained at that point. And then you can go ahead and pull the uh, the cam out. Uh, make sure, if you put it at top dead center, it's a, it's a little bit easier to get out. You don't have to screw around with the valve pressure and the valve spring pressure. And then uh, yeah, just start pulling the head off, and then uh, the cylinder comes off after that. You have, just remember you got these two. You got four bolts for. You got to take your exhaust off, obviously. You got the four bolts for the head. And then you got these two side bolts here. And then you have this one bolt down here for the cylinder. So, all right, let's go ahead and start the process.
Okay, so we are at the bench now. We got the cylinder and the piston. We're going to go ahead and check for um, tolerances as far as specifications on whether or not the cylinder is round, if it's out of spec, the whole nine yards. So the cylinder inner diameter is 78 millimeters to 78.015. And we are looking for 3.079 or 3.079 inches to 3.0715. And the service limit is 3.0718 or 78.025 millimeters. So we need to measure that in three different spots. So we're going to go front to back first here. It's not zero seven one. It's like zero seven oh six, I would say. And standard is three point oh seven oh nine. So if we're at oh six oh five, because it's in between. Let me get a close up. So it's just over, just over 07. So it's not close to 071, so that's good. So now we'll do a center measurement. It looks the same. One more at the bottom. Okay, that can't be right. <laughs> okay. Let me flip it over. the same okay so it's that way now we want to do perpendicular or side to side same and we'll do halfway down And make sure you're straight up and down and perfectly in half there. I'm going to wiggle it around side to side. If you can if you can twist it and it loosens up, you weren't at the halfway mark. Like circumference wise.
Looks good to me. Flip it over, do one last one, one last check here. That looks good to me. And so it says uh, also you're allowed out of round of four ten thousands. That's the uh, service limit there. Out of round, four ten thousandths, and out of taper, you're allowed four thousandths, four ten thousandths of taper. And then as far as the top here, you don't want any more than, uh, ideal would be none, but if you put a flat edge on the top here, you're allowed up to two thousandths, which you want to check, you know, all these different specs. Across like this, across like here, here, there, there. Yeah, we're good everywhere. No warpage. Shouldn't be any warpage. Okay. So the cylinder appears to be good. So let's see what our piston circumference is. Go ahead and put this telescoping gauge back. So here is what the manual states. So like I said, 3.0709 to 3.0715. So it was not even 0 0.0705. So that's good. Um, out of round 0 0.0004 which is almost like half, like half a thousandths basically. 0.4 of one thousandths. You just move the decimal point over. And let's see, I would say at the most we were within like maybe a quarter of a thousandths. Max. On all the on the out of round and taper actually so we're good there and then uh, the piston so 04 to 07 um, well outer diameter is 77.97 and it says quarter inch well a little over quarter inch from the bottom of the skirt seven millimeters so you can go like 250 thousandths basically or 280 thousandths from the bottom of the skirt Right there, and that's just above that wear mark, I'd say by about an eighth of an inch. So then what you want to do is you want to check the diameter right there. So we'll go about an eighth of an inch above that, above this side. And we are looking at... Oh yeah, this piston's worn. Gotta be some. There's gotta be some clearance. So we're looking at three point zero six seven nine, I would say. Three point zero six seven nine. 
3.0679. Wow. So I'm catching this just in time. Good deal. Praise God, as I like to say. All right, so that's pretty much all that we're looking for at this point. Um, you can measure things like the bore, but we're getting a new piston, so that uh, comes with a wrist pin, and it comes with circlips, so we don't even have to worry about that. Cause, yeah, this thing's worn, no doubt. And I would say, I mean, I like I said, the uh, I'm not sure if I said this, but when I got the bike last spring, 2020, the guy that I got it from, the seller said that they he put a new top end in it, which I don't even know what it is. HF11, if you guys know what HF11 and X45 is, let me know. But whatever that is, you know, whatever type of brand that is, because it doesn't say anywhere. But um, he said he put a new top end in it. I didn't change it all last year. I Once I fixed it, I would say maybe, I can't remember, maybe like early summer, June. I rode it through November and tried to ride it every weekend and um, didn't, I wasn't super hard on it. Yeah, I ripped on it here and there, but then took it to the ORV park a couple times. And then this spring, I took it to the ORV park twice, but then I've been riding motocross. In the spring, I put a an hour meter on it, and since I put the hour meter on it, I put almost 23 hours, uh, kind of hard hours, you know, maybe not as hard as some other people racing motocross, but, you know, motocross either way. So, yeah, it's I've definitely put it through its paces, so it's got, I'd say, 40 hours, 40 to 50 hours on it. I don't know what brand it is, but, yeah, it's up there, so... It's time, folks. So that's why we're doing this. And I will have to... I mean, there's still quite a bit of cross-hatching in this, but I am going to throw a quick hone in there. I believe I do have the right one, so... But yeah, you can see... You can barely see that. Right there. See how it's got that... There's still cross-hatching there, but to me, that just seems like... You know, those two marks that's on the top and bottom there. It just seems like the piston was twisting too, you know, it was rocking too much. So I'm pretty excited to get this in there. I'm about to go get a stinking kit today. Um, local shop has them from, with top end gaskets, they have Pro X, which is cast. And they have an A and B. And the B, I believe, is the top end of the service range. So we're looking at, or it's, okay, so here it is. So the piston outer diameter, the A is the for the Pro-X. They offer an A, which is 77.97. And then they offer a B, which is 77.98. So I would probably go with the 77.98. That makes the most sense. So this is rightful. Hopefully this will take care of all my problems. And what was the other thing? Well, oh, that's it. So, all right. I am going to, uh, like I was saying, they have the Pro X kit. And I believe it is, I'm not sure. I think it's a Weissco gasket kit or... Winderosa? I don't know if it's Winderosa. No, no, no. They said it was T and K or something like that. I don't know. But either way, um, one shop has Pro X and Weissco. The other shop has Pro X, Weissco, and JE. But the JE, they want like 250 for the whole thing. And you know, if this was just, but that's, and it's also a 3.2 to 1. Stock is uh, compression ratio. Stock is 12.9 to 1. So I don't know if I want to go the JE because I don't really want to add. Yeah, sure, I'll get more power, but I don't want to add more 
issues because then i'm gonna have to run like i might have to run like special fuel and i'm happy with a 93 <laughs> the pump cast 93 at this point so and then uh because the manual says 91 or greater so i don't know well i'm gonna figure it out so um yeah the next thing i'm gonna do is go ahead and um clean the cylinder up and then i will be back with the piston install and go from there yeah Okay, I got the cylinder all cleaned up. You can see there's a little bit there. Let's see. And there's still cross hatching, but I'm gonna clean it up anyways. There could be more. So there's definitely like, <clears throat> I don't know what you'd call it if it's actually glazing or not, but it needs, Needs a cleanup as far as I'm concerned, so I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna hit this with a soda blaster real quick. I'm gonna give it a quick hone. Yeah, I cleaned up pretty good. It's pretty. Now I'm gonna give it a quick hone. All right, so I just used some automatic trans fluid. Because Transfluid is a cleaning agent as well. Just put a nice thick coating in there. Just going to run a few passes of my ball hone here. Clean up the cylinder. Good to me. Okay, so I got the cylinder all cleaned up, soda blasted, gave it a quick hone, and now I'm getting ready to check the end gap in these rings. I got a Pro-X piston kit made in Japan. I don't know if that's... almost looks like it's ceramic coated, doesn't it? That is a nice snug fit. Pro-X Japan art. So that it's made at the art factory. They have some in Japan and Taiwan. And I did get a hold of the facility in Taiwan, actually, through email. And they said that all their factories are overseen by the same uh, department, I guess you could say. So I would assume, being that said, that the quality is all the same, whether it be made in Taiwan or the Japan, Japanese facilities. But that looks like a ceramic coating. Okay. I didn't realize this was a 13 and a half to one. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure if I'm going to go with it. Uh, but for now, I'm going to check the gap on these rings. And you're supposed to have a minimum ring gap of... Four thousandths um, per inch of bore. So, so that's what we're looking at right there. And then you want to make sure that it's lined up right. We're good there. So if you take the 3.0704 that this cylinder is and times it by four thousandths of an inch, um, I get over 12 thousandths. And uh, let's see here. If I go, I should probably be at 13 thousandths. 
But if I try and put a 12 thousandths in here, it doesn't want to go in. So I'm going to have to take this out and uh, shave a little off. And what I do is I just take some sandpaper and then I pinch them like this. And then I just go in and out. Doesn't have to be a big piece of sandpaper either. This is a piece of 320 grit. So what you want to do though as well is you want to make sure that they're perfectly across from each other. Feels like it's trying to fit in there, so we'll keep going. You want to make sure that the ring ends stay exactly across from each other. So they're actually pinching on either side, you don't want them coming together like this. You want them to be butt perfect end, end to end. And this is stamped with an R. Right there, you can barely see it. Right there. And that face is up. Get in there. So I'm going to go to 13. It says to use the uh, says to use a file held in a vise, and then take the rings and go up and down, but. This is the way I've done it and it's never failed me, so. All right, so that's 12, let's go to 13. Right here. Oh, 13, almost. So let's just go a hair more. Make sure 13 fits in there. I, mean, I can kind of cram it in there. Do a little bit more. All right, that's good. So that's set. So make sure these oil rings are good. Oh yeah, plenty. Okay, so that's that. And when you do place rings in, you always wanna make sure the marks are up. I don't see any marks on either of those. Where's the uh, this one? There it is. Okay. Then you always put your oil ring in first. You want them butted end to end. 
In three rings, you want them to be roughly 30% apart. So if we got one, one gap here, the other gap will be here, and the other one down here. Just get them in here for now. <clears throat> Thank you. No, it's perfect. All right, so top, bottom, and middle. That's good. And then, let's see, middle, we could go with the top here. I don't know if you're not supposed to stagger them like over the exhaust port. Oh, no, no, no. What am I thinking of? That's two strokes, folks. So where is the middle? Right here, so we'll put it on this side. There we go. All right. Take out the pin. Actually, let's put the circle clip in first. All right, there's one. Get a little bit of assembly lube, which is just oil. I use uh, I saw on Rocky Mountain ATV that they said that if you put it in the cylinder first, it's easier. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try that out this time. Let's make sure. Got everything ready to go.
It's exciting. First, first uh, top end on a four-stroke dirt bike. Not much different than you know two-stroke or whatever else. Huh? Piston, a piston is a piston is a piston is a cylinder is a cylinder is a cylinder is a cylinder. Okay, let's make sure we get the the rings. Plenty of lubrication. And you do this because you don't want what's called a dry start. Dry start is where you don't have any lubrication and your parts just seize because there's nothing to stop friction. All right, that should be good to go. And that's going to be on the back side there. So we'll go ahead and put this pin in. I guess we don't really have to do this, but this will make sure that it's stopping in the right spot. That is tight. I mean, not tight, I don't know. I'm just used to two strokes, I guess. Or blown out engines, I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's go ahead and put this over on the bike. And we're just gonna put a, smear a little bit of oil on here, just like always. So it doesn't stick in case you gotta take it off. I want to drench it, just a thin layer. I'm going to wipe any excess off. All right, let's see how easy this method is.
Now the fun part. Okay, this does not seem like the easier way to do it, I'll tell you that. So I'm just gonna do it the good old fashioned way. Yeah, there's that. Now let's go get the cylinder, put that on. Just trying to get these rings in all the way. Okay, there we go.
Now let's go ahead and get the head ready to put on. Okay, so the cylinder head gasket can only go on one way. But first you want to slide your chain guide in. There's that. Okay, let's go ahead and fit this head back on here. side to hold the cylinder down. I'm sorry, the cylinder head. Those are seven foot pounds, but just snug them up. And we get our four washers and nuts for the head. These washers have kind of a trapezoid shape to their profile. You want to make sure the wider spot is facing down. Be very careful not to drop anything down into the chain galley. Just tighten everything up. These head bolts get torqued to 29 foot pounds and you want to do it in three steps. So I go 10, 9, 10. I want to do it in a crisscross pattern. So actually it's not 10, 9, 10, it's 10, 19, and then 29. So I just add, first I do 10 pounds, then I add nine pounds, then I add 10 pounds more. And the last step, this is 29 pounds. Now if you do see any type of debris on these lifters, you're gonna wanna get that out, off, whatever. Now the next step is to put the camshaft in. You're going to want to make sure that the engine is at top dead center.
So that's a top dead center. On the crank side, then you can take your camshaft, slide this bearing over, Then you want to get the two marks on your camshaft lined up. Sucker is just not wanting to play nice today. Okay, so while I was at it, I ended up popping this off and putting the new oil pump gear on there. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put this side back on after I tighten this up. And then uh, cylinder is on, torque down. I got the cam on, but uh, I'm going to put this cover on anyway. And then the other side, and that way I can make sure that uh, I'm dead on as far as my cam alignment and timing. Which, what you want to do is, you have two marks right here, and those will line up with the notch right there, and that hole. So they're, I mean, they, you know, they're obviously in the right spot here, but I want to make sure that my cam is dead on I mean, it doesn't move a whole lot, but you know, if it's off one tooth, then obviously that's going to cause problems. So, um, you want to line these two lines up on either side of the cam gear. So, one on the right there and one on the left. So, you want to line those up with the top of the cylinder head and then check and see where that is. And then on the other side here, you have these punch marks. And those are supposed to line up with the arrow on the outside of the case on this side. So we get all that back together and uh, bring it back and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick that if you're going to put a new gasket on and you know, you're not doing a full rebuild, use something to scuff up the surface after you've scraped off the gasket and then make sure you put some type of covering over the gears and whatever else that way you're not getting any grime or grit or whatever you got going on there particles in there and obviously the the sides aren't too big of a deal but you know, this top section, you definitely want to cover everything before you, you know, start going at this stuff. You know, this is a high performance machine. You don't want to ruin it, deteriorate it just by being careless and sloppy. You know, take your time, be proud in your work, be proud of your work, your work ethic. Do things right. So it takes a couple extra minutes. Big deal. There. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up and then uh, 
get this gasket on and go from there. Okay, so we got the cases on. And let's see. Okay, so you can barely see that one right there. And really, um, it's more so, I don't think, I mean, a lot of people said that you can use this, but if you look at the other side, this is where the crank is. And you see those marks there. It's lined up with just about, we'll go up a hair. All right, there. So that and those are all lined up. I mean, those two right there, the one in the back, that's so you can align the crank with the counter shaft. But those inevitably line up with the mark on the crank for timing. So now if we go back after just a hair of an adjustment to the other side, you can see that notch a little bit better. Well, you can see the notch up there, and then you see the two marks, and you want it to be lined up with the one on the right when you look at it, which it just about is. And the other thing is that if we look at our teeth here, those are both lined up. You can see the mark. And those marks are lined up. And the other thing too, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the very top of the piston down there. That's a top dead center. So we'll go ahead and button up the top end here. All we have to do is just make sure that The bearings are lined up, our shims and caps are down there, I'll probably throw a little bit more oil on here and then at this point I can go ahead and put the rocker arm back in and then this little pin will slide through the rocker arm and then there's a plug that goes over the side there and then I'll torque these down, these get torqued down to 12 foot pounds for the cam bearing caps. And then the valve cover will go back over that and those two bolts at the top. You can just snug them up. The manual does say seven foot pounds. And then we'll start buttoning button this thing up. The only other thing I'm gonna let, uh, that's left that I'm gonna do other than buttoning it up is I'm gonna take this radiator off. I have a new set of radiators for this. Well, they're new to me, but they're the large radiators. And I also have a set of radiator guards and supports that go over those. So those will get put on as well. All right, so I'm getting ready to tighten up the cam bearing caps right now. Like I said, 12 foot pounds. I'm not 100% sure if it matters if you go crisscross as this isn't one unit. It's two separate caps, but you know, it could make a difference pulling the way it pulls on the the metal of the I highly doubt the metal of the head. And then the next step is to go ahead and just pop back in the cam chain tensioner. It's just a couple bolts. And I did put a thin layer of grease on both sides of the gasket there. You don't have to. I mean, it saves you from, you know, ruining the 
gasket if you ever need to take it off for some oddball reason. Then you put a flat screwdriver in there and crank it to the right. And that will take all the tension out of the cam chain tensioner by retracting the push mechanism in there. And then those get uh, tightened down to seven foot-pounds again, but you could just go ahead and snug them up. You use a quarter inch drive and it'll keep you from cranking them things too much. Give you a more accurate feel and just hand tightening them. Then there's a bolt that goes in there. But when you put that in, you want to go ahead and make sure that your cam is still timed properly. And it does look like we are lined up still. So, good deal. So I'll get that bolt in and then we'll go ahead and put the valve cover on and start working on getting these radiator swapped out. So, I'm going to go ahead and start this up for the first time. I wanted to wait till a little bit later in the evening, a little bit cooler, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm a little nervous, I'll be honest. <laughs> I've been like, thinking about this the whole day. So, I'm going to set you guys up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pump it over a few times. I'll open the gas. I mean, I can open the gas now, I guess. Or I could just pump it over a few times and then <clears throat> wait. You know, get the uh, the oil pumping, primed at least. It shouldn't really need much. Everybody says it's like instant freaking spray because of the pressure. Because there's a jet that's right at the bottom of the cylinder that sprays up. So, I should be fine. So, I'm going to set you guys up. You can watch the process. So, wish me luck on this one. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> All right, here we go. I mean, I don't even know if it's going to act different. Okay, well, pump it over a few times. Fuel's on. Gonna let it warm up. 
I'm gonna go for a ride. Smelling fuel, so. Yeah. What? Oh, are you serious? Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me! It's so funny because I thought of that. The plug was in the exhaust, you guys. Oh, that sounds a lot different. All right. Such an idiot.
Okay, I've said a few people going down the road. One guy, he, he kind of flagged me, he was throwing his hands up. So I stopped, didn't blow him off or anything. And I said, you know, I'm really sorry. I just put a new piston and rings in here and I'm trying to break them in. And he goes, well, you're just making all kinds of noise going up and down the road, go in the field or something. So I went over in the field and ripped it back and forth, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Uh, and then uh, kicked it down and let it, let it do a lot of engine brakes. So. Uh, <coughs> so far, so good. All right, guys, that is it for the video, rest of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found some useful information. Uh, if you guys have any questions on the process, let me know as far as like torque specs and whatever. You can download the 04 to 09 uh, CRF 250R Honda service manual from online. It's free, so um, yeah, that's the best way to do it. But like I said, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and like what you see, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you guys are notified to your mobile devices when I upload a new video. That way you can come on back, check out what we got going on. I'm always fixing to ride something, so. All right, guys, don't forget to smash that like button. I always appreciate that. Come on back. We'll see you guys in the next video. So take care and God bless.